Are you thinking about building out a van into a conversion for camping and traveling? And you've been wondering whether or not you should insulate it? Stick with me and I'm going to talk about my thoughts and experiences with insulation and no insulation in a van. Hey guys, Bruce here with Wanna Be Free. I'm sitting here on a beautiful sunny morning at the uh, Buckeye Regional Park in Arizona. And uh, this is gonna be my last day here. But I wanted to do one last video before I leave this location. I've been thinking about doing a video on this insulation subject for quite some time. And I'm finally to the point where I think I have enough information to give you that it could be useful to somebody so uh, the subject is insulating your van whether to insulate or not to insulate what I'm speaking from is uh, two van builds I built a Ford E350 that was heavily insulated and then this current Ford Transit Connect that I have that I didn't do any insulation at all in and uh, the perspectives and the experiences that I've had with both. <clears throat> so with the Ford E350 that was insulated, when I built that van, I was looking at YouTube videos and trying to figure out what to do and how to build it and all those sort of things. And uh, most people that I saw were always insulating the van. So with the zero experience at that point in time I figured well I better insulate so I insulated that van I put uh, polyiso on the floor the walls and the ceiling and I also had some uh, fairly thick blackout curtains that insulated the windows and it it would hold heat quite well it worked really good in the winter time which I don't do a lot of winter camping but uh, it took very little to heat it and it held the heat substantially well considering that it was actually a vehicle. But then when I took that van to Arizona and or a couple of trips I made back to my home state of Colorado in the middle of the summer when it was 100 degrees out, the insulation does help kind of keep the heat out of the van to a point, but then after a while the van will start to heat up and everything in the van will heat up just from that the air circulating through the van the warm air that's from outside and then when the Sun goes down and it's time to go to bed or you're crawling in there to to sleep it took hours for the heat to dissipate and for the van to cool down so in that case the insulation wasn't really a uh, helpful it was more of a hindrance because it took so long to cool it back down and of course I'm talking about not using any air conditioning at all in either either situation I did have a uh, fantastic fan roof vent in the e350 and it would help because I could turn it on and it could either pull the air out or blow air in and I, I had it blowing right on the bed so you could get some cooling from the uh, from the air blowing on you and, and it helped a bunch. But I guess uh, what you really need to think about when you're when you're building your van or if you're rebuilding a van or modifying it is where do you intend to use the van the most? In the warm temperatures or in the cool temperatures? Of course in the cool temperatures I believe that insulating is well worth it. It's more expense, it's a lot of work, and it's more more money to, uh, to insulate your van. And in some cases, depending on the van, it can be quite difficult to figure out how to, how to uh, apply the insulation to where it's going to be effective, what type of insulation to use, and so on and so forth. But a few other drawbacks of insulation if you're in a humid environment, it will hold moisture and potentially lead you to mold issues 
if you spend a lot of time in your van in those more moist uh, environments. So when I got this Ford Transit Connect, I was kind of in a rush to put it together, so time was a factor. And so was expense, so I decided to go with a real simple build, and all I did was build out a bed and uh, install a solar panel and a battery for charging electronics and that sort of thing. I did not put a vent in it, and I also did not insulate anything. It just has a regular stock factory headliner in it, but the walls behind the front seats are just uh, metal walls with no insulation and no no siding or anything in there and it's worked out really well for this particular road trip where uh, I intend to spend most of my time in a, in a warm environment I did just get done with the trip if you've seen in my past videos I spent a week up at uh, 8,000 feet elevation in a uh, national forest in Arizona where it got fairly cold. It got down to, I think, uh, the lowest I saw on the thermometer was 34 degrees at nighttime and about 60s in the daytime, low 60s. I do have a Olympian Wave 3 heater that I just hang on the wall and it was worth its weight in gold up there what I would do is heat the van up for about 30 minutes to an hour just prior to crawling into bed shut the heater off and then sleep and of course by the time I woke up in the morning it was cold then I would reach over and turn the heater back on 30 minutes or so just to take the chill off and then crawl out of bed and get dressed and it worked out really nice when it was 34 degrees outside that Olympian heater on high setting, which I think is 3000 BTU, was able to uh, warm it up to about 68 degrees with no insulation. But of course, as soon as I shut it off, it would cool back down. So just some things to keep in mind. Uh, but by that time, you know, the sun was up and it was starting to warm up outside and it was, it was fine. Um, down here where I'm currently at, at the Buckeye Regional Park, it's getting down to about 60 at nighttime, maybe a little less, 55 or 60. And daytime is about 80, 80 85. Um, of course, with weather that nice, I never intend to just sit in the van. But with the way this Ford Transit Connect opens up the doors, both side doors open and the back doors open, I can keep it the same temperature inside the van that it is outside the van without a roof vent. So I didn't have the expense and trouble and cutting a big hole in my roof, which is not a big deal. Uh, but I didn't have to go through that trouble. With the uh, way the doors open and everything on this van, I'm able to keep it the same temperature that I would even if I had a fan. I just, if I was cooped up in the van, the fan would be nice because I would have that airflow. But I did buy a small 12 volt fan that I use. Uh, I haven't used it very much, but I can I can get the same thing the effect of the wind blowing on me from the fan if I need to if I have to be cooped up inside and That was only oh, I don't know 10 or 15 bucks at a, a Local store you can pick them up anywhere that sells auto fans um, And that was real quick and easy it just plugs in with a cigarette lighter type plug-in into your battery bank and and I can run that fan. It takes a half a watt. I can run it all day long and all night long without really hardly even hurting my battery uh, power. I did uh, in this particular van, again, if, if you uh, have seen my past videos, if not, you can go back and look and see how I did it. But I used Reflectix, Reflectix to cover all of the exterior window or the, uh, the rear windows in this van. And I think that that helps quite a bit, help control the heat so I don't have sun shining through a window. Also, I have that awning that I made that covers the entry door, the sliding entry door. And uh, if you use it right and you park the van properly, what it, what it mainly does is it keeps the sun from shining in there on your uh, interior 
of your van and keeps things from warming up from the sun. It will also help you control the heat. And uh, that's really important if you have a 12 volt refrigerator or a cooler or something like that. You don't want that sun to be shining on that item and heating it up. So keep it at, back in the shade and out of the sun and your ice will last longer and you'll use less battery power if you're using a 12 volt compressor refrigerator like I am. So far so good on this particular build and, and I'm not regretting not insulating. I've had several comments of people asking me well why didn't you insulate and uh, this hopefully this video will help answer those questions. But one thing that I really have noticed with no insulation with this particular van is that when I get ready to go to bed after the sun goes down it cools off quite rapidly in the van and uh, an hour after the sun goes down it's it's cooled off to the point where I can crawl into bed and, and sleep comfortably. So I guess the the uh, the answer to the question of the title of this video is should I insulate or not really depends upon how you intend to use your van and what environment do you plan on spending most of your time in. Hopefully this video will help you guys out if you're uh, pondering that question whether to insulate or not and uh, I don't think that that answer is going to be the same for any one person. There's probably as many different opinions on this subject as there are people out there that are traveling and living in their vans. So another fantastic day as I said before. I'm going to be packing it up here shortly and head back to Phoenix to spend uh, Thanksgiving with the family. I hope you're all doing well out there and enjoying every day as I am and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one.